G9 Defense 9mm Plus P. This ammo was sent over to me by one of my Patreon members, Observer Will. So thank you for sending that. I really wanted to test this stuff once he said he sent it to me because it's such an interesting design. It is very much like the Extreme Defender type bullet where it is solid copper. But this is actually called an external hollow point. That is kind of a strange name considering, you know, a traditional hollow point has grooves in the bullet at the top one groove anyways and this you know it's the same direction but they call it an external hollow point but it is such a different design that i am kind of interested in what that'll do so it says ballistically better on the top up there and it's an 80 grain rated at 15 20 feet per second so i'm going to test it in my subcompact 3.2 inch taurus g2c and my full size mmp 2.0 with a five inch barrel so that should really give us a lot of ballistic information and, you know, to compare it to something, you know, my Patreon member also sent over some HST and some gold dot and stuff like that that I'm going to use in a different test. But I want to run a couple rounds of that, what he sent through, just to kind of compare. Because, you know, this is a 124 grain plus P. I want to see what that does, and then we'll do a direct comparison just to kind of see, you know, what we get, how this performs, and if it performs like a hollow point, and... Basically, that's it. So we're going to go through the chronograph. We're going to see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. And then I'm going to do my 10% clear ballistic test. And what I always like to do is plain clear ballistics just to see what our best potential is of those cartridges. And then after that, I do more of a real world simulation where we have three inches of clear ballistics to represent hitting a pectoral muscle. And then a quarter inch medium density fiber board to represent hitting ribs or sternum. And on the front of that, we have four layers of denim. Why three inches uh, to represent a pectoral muscle is because clear ballistics and ballistics gel in general is not a one-to-one -one, uh, flesh comparison. So basically three inches is like an inch and a half pectoral muscle. That's why when you go 18 inches in gel as the maximum, you're really like talking nine inches in, a, in human flesh. So we'll see how those cartridges compare. And then I am going to shoot up my steel to see what kind of practical accuracy I can get. So let's get started with this test. All right, 80 grain rated at 15, 20 feet per second. I'm just going to do three rounds so that I have enough rounds to complete this whole test. And that'll give us enough velocity readings to see what we get. So five inch barrel, I'm about five yards from the target, four yards from the chronograph. Let's see how close we get to 15, 20 feet per second. 16, 17, nice. About 100 feet per second faster. Point of aim, point of impact. 1607, 1602, real nice. Above rate of velocity by about 80 feet per second. Let's see what we get in our 3.2 inch barrel. See how that compares. 1487, 1476. 1441, so a little bit below rate of velocity, but this is a sub subcompact pistol. So they probably got that velocity rated through an even four inch barrel. So they're definitely telling the truth when it comes to that velocity. So let's hit our ballistics gel block and see what we get with these. All right, so I put my chronograph up. I'm gonna try to get a read with one of these shots. The reason why I don't normally do this is because my unique testing protocol, sometimes that three inch piece can fly off and land right on top of that and kind of knock the whole thing over. Uh, but with nine millimeter, I don't think it's going to be a huge issue. So I'm going to run the control round and our best potential here with our spear gold dot. No denim, nothing like that. Just plain clear ballistics. So let's see what we get here with our spear gold dot. 1284 feet per second. Now let's do our G2 round here right above that. 1636 let's try our short barrel with the g2 round and i mean g9 round you know i cut my taurus g2c and i gotta kind of got that on my mind you can see where i get that <laughs> where i want to say g2 it's g9 all right uh let's see here taurus g2c i go above that 1511 let's go take a look at that All 
All right, so interesting here. There's a lot of damage in there, a lot more than what I see with the Extreme Defender, a lot more. So let's start here with our, um, our Spear Gold Dot here. Yeah, it's a little bit cloudy here on the outside, but it's hard to see. But what we can see here is we got about 12 and 3 quarters inches of penetration, very big expansion. Now with our uh, our G our G9 rounds here, uh, what we got going on is just a little bit more penetration with our 5 inch barrel than our 3.2 inch, but the damage is very, very similar, just a tad more with our 5 inch barrel. So our 5 inch barrel, we got right to 19 inches. I would not consider that over penetration at all because clear ballistics is less dense than regular gel. That's perfectly fine. With our 3.2 inch barrel, we got about 18 and a half inches. I know sometimes when I put my finger here, it'll look like, once in a while, it'll look like it's a different measurement than what I'm saying. That's because this is a widescreen, so it's projecting the center out this way. So everything you see on this block and this block are going out like that. So sometimes my fingers won't line up, but we got perfectly acceptable penetration with all of these, but the, the G9 rounds seem to do better as far as getting deep penetration. And that is some of the biggest damage I have seen in this type of testing before. That's very interesting. Um, let me put on the uh, denim and the NDF and, and, and try again. All right, a control round or a spear gold dot. And this is, you know, denim is where sometimes hollow points get clogged, albeit a uh, gold dot is pretty good. So four layers of denim, three inches of clear ballistics, a quarter inch MDF. Let's see how our gold dot does. Oh. <laughs> it didn't knock my chrono off, but that's why I don't do it. Let's try the, the G9 rounds now. All right, I got my magnum bar up on top, piece of wood I put up there when I shoot with magnum rounds. That does tend to seem to help prevent that from falling off. I got four layers of denim, which is kind of redundant here, but, you know, just to try to keep things fair. Next up, we have our G9 round. Five-inch barrel. Let's see what this does. 16, 13. Let's try a short barrel now. All right, short barrel. Let's see what this does. No velocity read on that one, uh, but let's go take a look at those. All right, so I am starting to see something here. And another reason why I use the MDF, not just because it's a rib simulation, but sometimes it can tell you something when the bullet hits. And we can definitely see with our longer barrel, it impacted after three inches of clear ballistics perfectly straight. With our shorter barrel, it's starting to go sideways. That can still cause a lot of damage, but yeah, that's not, not necessarily good there uh, that it does that. So what we're looking at here with our gold dot round, Got expansion, perfectly acceptable expansion. We're at 14 inches penetration, that's good. Our five inch barrel, well, let's, let's start with our 3.2 inch, get that out of the way. Damage isn't that great. And obviously the reason for that is because it's not impacting straight. And we can actually see that on both the gel shot in the back, which I didn't notice that before with the plain gel, is that our five inch barrel is straight, but our 3.2 inches backwards. And the same thing going through the MDF our, our, I should say forward facing, not straight. Our five inch barrel is forward facing. Our 3.2 is backwards. So that tells you a little bit something there. So what we're seeing here with the 3.2 inch, it's about 15 and a half inches. That's fine, but not a lot of damage. With our five inch barrel, we still have a huge amount of damage. Just about as much as we had in plain gel. We have a very ideal penetration of 17 and a half inches. So that's really good when we look at you know this thing overall. It's doing really well. So comparing this to like the Extreme Defender, I think this is better, to be honest. Just looking at it, it looks better. So I'm gonna cut into this block out here in the field. We'll take a look at those bullets and then I'm gonna shoot at my steel.
All right, here's a close up. We're not gonna be able to really tell a whole lot from looking at the bullets. Now we can tell a little bit by looking at what I fired through the five inch barrel with our gold dot. And if we take a look here, there's plain gel. Here's MDF. Didn't bring my calipers out with me, but I can definitely tell just by looking at the one through our MDF that we're probably at about 55 to 60 caliber. This we're probably at three quarters of an inch. That's pretty good. And our gold dot performed really well. Five inch barrel, here's our bullets. I don't really see anything particularly telling with that. There's a 3.2 inch. Everything looks exactly the same with those bullets because they are solid copper. So that's just a close up of those bullets. So let me shoot the steel now and see what kind of practical accuracy I can get. All right, being that my five inch pistol was the only pistol that really shot it straight and right I'm going to do my accuracy testing with this. I'm just going to do various distances. Sometimes ammo like this kind of drifts around uh, just because it loses the momentum. So I am curious about what this might do at distance. So I'm going to fire a couple rounds from 25 yards, aim center, mass, slow fire, see where they hit. All right, interesting the way they impacted. Let me back up just a little bit. All right, 50 yards from the target. Same thing. Aim center mass. Fire slowly. See where they hit for me. All right, not bad. Let me back up to 75 yards. All right, 75 yards. This is normally where ammo gives me a little bit of trouble. I mean, this type of ammo. Let's see if I can make a hit from 75 yards. Huh, not a problem. Makes me wonder, how many do I got here? Looks like I got about four rounds left. Let me back up to 100 yards. All right, 100 yards. I normally don't come back this far just because of uh, the footing down here. The ground is very uneven. But I am curious. So I don't even know if you can see that target from here, but I'll see if I can get a hit. Hit something metallic. <laughs> now leaves are kind of... Br Blowing down from the wind, blocking my view completely. I have to change my hold a little bit, my stance. This might throw me off. <laughs> They're blowing down even more. I could change my stance again. Yeah, I felt that coming. Same thing there too. Starting to wobble around. I could tell that, you know, that, that leaf was just, it kept coming down in front of my sight every time. I've got about 15 more excuses if you want to hear them. But anyways, what I could say about this ammo is it seems to do really what the extreme defender type bullet was designed to do, but the extreme defender doesn't do it as well as this. <laughs> So what I'm seeing from this is this is really good ammo. And it's interesting because I've actually never heard of it before. Well, actually, I think I may have heard of it one time, so either on YouTube or Google or somewhere I was looking at ammo. I may have seen it. Uh, and that was probably six months ago. And then my Patreon supporter, Observer Well, said he was sending it. And I looked at it again and kind of researched it. And it just looks like it's really good ammo because it's, it's delivering what the Extreme Defender type bullet, the Lehigh bullet, is supposed to be doing. But it's actually doing it the way the Lehigh claims it will. And the Lehigh kind of, I, I've got mixed results with that. It does kind of the same thing, but this does it in more of a line. Like, from what I recall with the Lehigh bullet, it looks like it causes this massive amount of damage. It goes back down to a little pinhole. And then it gets bigger again. So it's suggesting that, you know, that hydrostatic type motion, it's not hydrostatic because clear ballistics isn't, there's no water in it, but the same type of thing where it's delivering that from just pressure. And then it's sucking back down, I think, with the extreme bullet. And then once it gets a little further, I think it's starting to tumble. With this, it looks like the entire track is just this massive thing 
where it looks just like it's putting that pressure in a straight line, except for in the short barrel. So what I'm seeing from this, it looks like if you have a four inch barrel to a five inch barrel and you're going to get that velocity they're advertising of 1500 feet per second, I'm guessing this here, but it's an educated guess. I'm guessing you're gonna get basically the same effect that I got here. But if you're using a subcompact pistol, it's not quite fast enough, it starts to destabilize. So what I'm seeing here looks pretty good. I think it's a pretty good designed ammo. It's designed better, I think, than the Extreme Bullet. And the other thing, you know, once we got to 75 yards, even with some of the nine millimeter Extreme Defender, they would all start drifting off three to five to six feet to the right, which I guess would be following my, my barrels rifling or something. I don't know. But this stuff didn't. It, it just hit pretty much where it aimed at distance. So the way it, it flows through the air is more efficient than the extreme type bullet. So I'm going to say overall, this is looking pretty good. Now, am I going to, you know, switch out this ammo? My, my HSTs at home for this? Uh, no, but you know, if it's all I had, I think it wouldn't be a bad choice. So that's my review of that ammo. Thank you again to Observer Will for sending that. I had a fun time out here testing it. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.